Let's start for the today's first point, respiration. What do you feel when you hold your hand towards your chest? The movement of your chest goes up and down, right? What if you hold your hand towards your nose? You will feel that air comes out, also it goes in. You can also observe this when you see a sleeping dog. The belly or the stomach of the dog moves rapidly or you can see the movement in the stomach of the dog. It goes up and down. Yes, so this is breathing. Breathing is respiration. Taking in of oxygen and giving out of carbon dioxide is respiration. Living organisms require oxygen in order to live. Inhaling oxygen and exhaling carbon dioxide formed in the body due to use of oxygen is called respiration. For all living organisms, only oxygen is not the only gas to live. For some living organisms like plants, they require carbon dioxide to take in and we living organisms, we human beings or other animals require oxygen to take in. But all the living organisms respire, they require some or the other gas to inhale and the other gas they release out, that is exhale. Plants respire with the help of the green leaves present. Gills are useful for respiration in the fish. Human beings require nose and lungs for the respiration. Animals such as fish, snake, mouse, etc. have specific organs for respiration. What about earthworms? Earthworms have their moist skin by which they respire. Next point is excretion. Excretion means Whatever unwanted, unnecessary material is present in our body is removed off. We eat whatever is necessary for us. But whatever is not necessary, we remove it out in the form of urine and in the form of stools or feces. So this is kind of excretion in human beings. Same way excretion in animals is also done. Excretion in plants is also done. In plants, excretion is done with the help of leaves and sap. At the time of excretion of plants, plants shed their leaves. So excretion is done with the help of leaves. Leaves fall down from the plants. And new leaves are formed. In some other plants, a sticky substance is given out of the plants. So that is called as a sap. Sap of plants. This is also a kind of excretion. You can find this sap in the trees like coconut, bubble tree, jackfruit tree which gives out sap. Responsiveness to stimuli and movements. Plants like mimosa plant, we call it as lazuli. So these plants, if you touch, what do you observe? It is seen that the leaves of this mimosa plant suddenly close off. So this is the responsiveness. It responds if it is given a touch. So this is responsiveness to stimuli and movements. If you plant a creeper or a climber, it will try to grow towards the support closer to it. So this is responsiveness to stimuli. The plants by its own learns to live in a proper and manageable way. Responsiveness to stimuli is a characteristic of living things. Reproduction When one living organism gives birth to another living organism of its own kind, then it is called as reproduction. A horse gives birth to a new baby horse, so that is reproduction. Human beings give birth to a new baby human being, so it is reproduction. Plants also, seeds grow from plants. The seeds grow from plants of the same kind, yes, so that is reproduction. A coconut seed 
will grow and form a coconut plant only it will not form a banyan plant so that is reproduction a bird will hatch eggs and it will form into again a same kind of bird this is all reproduction the process by which a living thing generates a new living thing like itself is called reproduction or procreation reproduction is a characteristic of living things thank you